Hello, sir. Hi, Martin. Thank you for inviting me here, and uh, good morning, everyone. Good, man. I'm so glad. So, um, full disclosure for those who um, are just joining us for the first time, I do these core conversations like you know every day, ten o'clock, uh, and I'm always like I won't say hunting for people, but I have a good conversation with someone offline, and like it'd be awesome to have you on core conversations and expand this conversation to uh, different communities, right? So. Yeah. Uh, so Gurpreet, I usually have fitness people and people I've had like DJs and athletes and marketing people. And, uh, you know, I actually had another app uh, guy on here before in the past too, um, for the guy who, who invented Audia, which is like almost like an audio version of YouTube. Okay. A uh, young guy doing his thing. So I, I love hearing people and their vision kind of just throw it out there. So uh, that's kind of, that's why I wanted to have you on here. We'll just, we'll just talk shop for a little bit. And I just want to hear more about what you do. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, and you'll start to see your people jump up in the chat here too, right? So anyone who follows the app or anyone who follows you personally might, might jump in here. So it should be good. Oh. Um, so I just start by just asking you to say your name and your business, and then we'll just go wherever the conversation takes us. Yeah, so uh, my name is Gurpreet Bagwit. I work for Hydro One, but uh, this was uh, just on the side. There were a few events in the life that happened that I thought there was something like this that should be there. Uh, there were, i give you a couple examples. There was, uh, I, I've received a few Amber Alerts uh, for kids missing and stuff like that. And I felt like, how could I help in that, right? So, and I wasn't even sure, like, could I even help? What are the next steps? It was pretty confusing when I get the Amber Alert at night. I look at it. I don't even recognize the city name sometimes. And yes. I'm not even sure, is it for me, uh, right? So I realized there was some kind of gap in those things. And there was an incident that somebody hit and run my car in the parking lot. And I was kind of confused, like, what are the next steps? Like, do I claim on my insurance and raise my premium versus somebody who just left, who was at fault, right? Yes. And there was another incident where uh, my niece, uh, she witnessed uh, bullying at school. So there were a few incidents like that. So I, I was thinking there should be something that we should be able to help people with, with the technology growing. Uh, we should be able to help people. And I came up with the multiple names and then I eventually decided to put uh, X Ami. It's Ami in French means friend. Yes. Uh, and X is, I'm an engineer, so X is usually an unknown or anonymous. So okay. that's how I came up with the name. Anonymous friends. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's, that's great. I love, I mean, there's such vision in that. I mean, I think we're all like, once you move into digital media, you f you find people have a like vision or like doing the same thing. Like all of our plies people, like they're almost like anonymous friends to some degree, right? Because you never authentically cross paths with them. You haven't shook hands with these people, but they are our friends and we're growing together. We're doing things. We're moving towards some vision, like a safe community or a better Pilates community or whatever. So I, I like that. Yeah. So uh, let me uh, give you an example for like an Amber Alert. So what the app could do is um, it could, uh, it will send you an alert. If police report an Amber Alert there, it will send you an alert if you are within one kilometer of that alert. It won't, okay. yes, it won't send you if you're not there. Like if you if, won't, I won't get the alerts from Sudbury, Montreal, and yes. thinking like, what am I supposed to do? It w woke me up like in the middle of the night and I have no idea what to do now. Yes. Um, that's one of the important things. Uh, and also we could help police with their investigations. If they're requesting information, you'll only get a notification if, if you are in that area, if you are within that, uh, if you live there or you are within that area and use the app. So you yes. kind of can help police with their investigation, I think. Like police can uh, um, don't have to hire too many people to go around and ask the people in the neighborhood versus yes. they can just uh, request information on the app and uh, you can just call them or reach out if you have anything. And I, I think it'll save a lot of uh, money in that case uh, for now, the police department. Absolutely. So someone on the show yesterday was talk we were talking about this just in the setup and they're like, it sounds like the next door app. 
uh, e- it is a big difference uh, with next door people do talk about uh, the incidents in the area but by the time the uh, post get viral the thing has happened in like three days in the past in this if someone reports an incident if even people can report an incident if you witness somebody like let's say stealing cars from the driveway yeah and if you create an incident at that location everyone in the neighborhood would get instant message right so if i see someone like walk up and steal a package off of uh, amazon package off of someone's door i could be like click amber like not amber alert click here's an alert and then everyone in the area would know that someone just stole absolutely and right away right and that's yeah. the biggest difference uh in the neighborhood you could put it by by the time the post get viral and like gets a lot of views um it it gets to you it's like two days and now you're just that's basically to chat about and maybe talk about what you could do in future uh on next door but here it's like instantly you'll get it and i mean even if it's stolen if other people have the packages they can just quickly ask their parents or kids to just quickly pick it up so that it yes. doesn't get stolen either right right exactly okay so then can you talk about like how it ties into like linkedin or twitter something that is in real time like what's the difference there is it just the locality of it uh, yes uh, so in this case you are you can pick what area do you want to monitor so you are ward 8 right you nine, can nine. 9 so you yes. can actually put your address and you can even pick the kilometers so you can say i only want to get notifications like, within yeah, half a kilometer five, yeah or yeah like two kilometers of medevale i can do that there's just like a absolutely yeah. Yeah, yeah you can decide in which area you want to get the notification you can also choose say for example you work in toronto downtown you can pick the toronto location the address and then choose to monitor the radius there so if yeah. something goes wrong in that area mm-hmm. you know, like water line break or something like that if somebody reports it you already know uh yeah. you're going to be dealing with the traffic when you go there so for those in the chat just out of curiosity if you know if you could just put first of all what city you're in i'm just curious so some people are, i see like london and some people in the states if you could just put your city that you're in in the comment section first I, i'd appreciate that just to get a a view of like where people are from and second if you've heard of any kind of app like this in your area or if there's something that some of that your that your area use i'd just be curious to find out what they are and group if you could talk to those and find out like you know like what the advantages are and how that uh or or if you know in those cities or in those areas like what they use right so yes um i think uh the biggest difference in this app is uh anyone can post the incidents and okay. and if you're monitoring that area you can view that incident as well so it's pretty transparent most of the reporting apps or you report a crime to the police and it could it could be like a hit and run and police don't care about that and yes. then that person basically doesn't get anything right like so if i witness your car being hit i report it to the police police necessarily it's not on their top list to actually tell you that this is the other car and this is a, their insurance policy they'll probably don't go that far but yes. if you're monitoring you will get that proof right yes. now you can go to the police say like hey somebody posted a video this is the video proof of somebody hitting and run my car and yes. can you uh, go ahead and confront the guy and maybe get uh, their insurance so that you can sure. claim the insurance on their uh, put the claim on their insurance versus your own right okay so yeah so two people here are saying that next door is is their is their safety bolo be on the lookout you know type thing but you're like you're saying it's just the instantaneousness if that's yes. the word <laughs> of it yeah right yeah if you get like a uh, notification has to be right on time and it should be only for the area you live in not like i do i do have next door as well i do get notification somebody try to steal the car on west end of brampton and mississauga and like uh, east end of brampton i live in west end of brampton so it doesn't really like yeah it is uh, infomercial like you should close your doors you should maybe do that which is pretty good yeah. but yes. i don't know it's if it's like there's nothing that tells you something is happening in your neighborhood right now yes right 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 okay i got it nice um so 
how did you come about making this app? Like, I mean, what, do you, are you a coder? Or are you just like, are you, do you have someone who like, uh, talk about the process. Cause like many times people have an idea and a vision to do something like that and don't even know where to start. So if you can just paint a picture for our, our artists of, of how that came about. So first, uh, like I said, like there was the Amber alert that actually that was the bulb in my head. I'm like, I really want to help. Um, I, so in, even in Amber Alert, what happens is if you're if a kid gets kidnapped, right? First thing is you go to the police. There's a long process, and it could take like I would say it still takes one or two hours, right? And by the time the person in two hours, you can like be out of Toronto, <laughs> right? Yeah, so yeah. in this case, what uh, it gives people an opportunity to log a event right away. Right. And in the neighborhood, people could be watching and reporting and people would have reported by that time that somebody who took a boy or a girl had white van and like this is a license plate I noticed right away. And now you have a lot more information to play with while you go yes. to the police. You have all this information already, like which yes. will which will really help to find the kid. Right. Yes. Um, yes. And it doesn't really wait for police to raise an Ember alert. But police can also raise an Ember Alert on the app, which is a verified incident because it's raised by police or any authority. Yes. So it'll yes. show a verified mark that it has been reported by an authority. So in okay. that case, only people in that area will get a notification. And I think it'll add a lot of value. But like where this bulb actually hit was like when somebody hit and run my car, I was like, yes. uh, I and I had... Uh, and you can report somebody asked uh, anonymity and uh, you absolutely report everything anonymously. And there's an option to show your identity as well. That's up to you. Right. But there is, it's absolutely anonymous. Um, okay. okay. So the most important part was like when somebody hit and run my car, I had a dash cam actually, I recorded okay. the whole incident, but yes. the ang the angle of the, the truck that hit was uh, in a way that I didn't get the full license plate. And police wanted the full license plate. So mm -hmm. I only got like the two digits, but I knew when the incident happened. So I went back to my gym next day. So I looked, those cars were parked right in front of me. The ones, those were in the video. So I checked, they had a dash cam as well. Um, out of, I think seven or eight, three had dash cams. So I left a note, a, this, is, this is the incident happened at 5.56 PM yesterday. Uh, if you have a dash cam video showing the license plate, please give it to me and just yes. leave a note on my windshield. And next day, somebody left a note be with the license plate and I matched the first two digits matched. I was pretty sure that's the, that's the license plate. I went to the police and uh, they were able to find the guy and I was able to claim on their insurance versus my own insurance. Yes. So I was like, this could very easily be done on the app. You don't yes. have to, like all you have to do is create an incident and ask the people in that area to uh, if they have anything, they yes. could just add a, a video to my incident. That's all right. they have to do. I'll never know them. I don't have mm -hmm. to know them. They don't have to come with me to the police. So it, yes. it eliminates all that it's process. Convenience, Even, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the most important part that then I thought like this could be a good idea, but I'm myself not a good coder. So, um, I had the vision what I wanted. So I hired a company to do the coding for me. Um, which, um, uh, I kind of like, fine. yeah, worked with them and see, uh, my vision was, uh, portrayed in the app and was pretty happy with the product they made. And, uh, now it's live. And uh, the good thing is like, I reached out to the Peel police. They, they loved the idea. Yes. Um, that's how they paired me up with, the um, uh, safe, safe city safe. mississauga yeah yep they yep. they are actually leasing our code right now and they're gonna they're oh, gonna good. build it yeah they lease their code and they're gonna build their own app just for mississauga that's you know it's funny um we had a conversation about this and i, I thought it made sense for for my area for ward nine and then safe city reached out to me to get my idea on some of these things too so we started to have some conversations about how we can make safe city more relevant in the sense that it's it's a great access it's a, it's a great resource but it's underutilized yes. so i think that this is a good way to kind of increase utilization yep. of the whole city safe city platform itself yep so uh 
From that, we have actually expanded, uh, our, uh, tried to expand to Brampton as well. And they're interested, but they're trying to figure out how we can work together. Same thing with Safety O uh, for Toronto as well. They're also kind of like trying to figure out um, uh, how they can work, to, how we can work together. Um, because my goal was uh, not to lease out and make small apps throughout uh, every municipality. Uh, yes. Because I would like to keep one app because my office could be in Toronto. I don't want to download another app for Toronto. I mean, yes. while I live in Brampton, I have to download another one uh, for Brampton. And then I'm yes. like at the border of Milton and Mississauga as well. So yes. I don't want to download like four apps to just. That's, yeah. It's diluting the brand in a sense, right? Because now people aren't going to go directly to your app. They're going to go to the safe city one, which is fine for you. Yeah. But it, it makes it like. You're competing against yourself almost. Yeah, exactly. So um, right now, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to actually reach out to the universities to uh, do a lot more because I think the, uh, the new generation always comes up with a better resolution. So I want them to try it out yes. for, uh, for um, safety within the university because they're mm -hmm. like bicycles get stolen and stuff like that happens. Yes. Graffiti right. and vandalism and stuff like that. So, um, and there might be actually good ideas coming out of the youth because that's where, because if they say like, we want something like this in the app, yes. uh, I would like be, definitely consider, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'll definitely consider uh, the kids viewpoint and how the new generation thinks because they're obviously like their brightest minds. They're yes. always thinking, they're always doing something new. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm actually reaching out to Western University and um, try to start from there because I have yes. a little connection there. So if it works out there, then I, I think it'll be great to start at the university level and try to improve the app even more. And then I think the cities will have uh, the best of it when, uh, well, it's open to use anytime. Yes. Uh, so anyone can go ahead and download the app and start using it. Sure. Um, okay, so you got, you, you have the inspiration looking at Amber Alert's hit and runs and bullying as kind of like the three kind of different events that, that, that can call this, call a need for this. You find a guy to code it, then what? Like, how do you actually get it out? Are you just telling friends? Are you paying someone to market it? Like, like, how, like how, how do you go from there? So actually, I, I'm still in the learning. I would say I'm in the learning phase of how to get it out there. So uh, first thing first, I thought it would be a great app for local police. So that's how I, I just reached out to Peel Police. That was your first contact. Yeah. yeah, that was my first contact. They loved the idea. They didn't know like how to use it. Then they paired me up with like Safe City Mississauga. Then I found I had no idea like there was something like that before mm, okay. and then they told me there are other departments within like uh, similar municipalities in Brampton uh, Toronto reached out to them and then there is a Canadian uh, version as well Felix Merger is the manager for that I reached out to him he loved the idea okay. he said like he would be he would love to partner but he doesn't know like how they can really help but they're definitely backing the app right yes um, can, sorry, Griffith, just want to, I wrote down the word how here because that's, it seems to be one of those operative words a lot, right? Because we've got, we've heard your why. Yes. And now the tough part for anyone who watches this, whatever industry is the how. Yes. Right? Yeah. Right. So actually I've uh, done a few videos on TikTok. What happens is like the video goes out, people download it. And they you they start using it for a little bit, but then they don't see too many incidents because a lot of like what has to happen is a lot of people in an area have to start using it. Like yes, so once they start using it, they'll start posting incidents, and then people will be aware. They can even make people aware of like dangers. Like let's say there's a coyote in the area, don't take yes. your dog or old parents. Yes. Don't go there. Right. Right. So even small events like that could be reported, but it's just like the education part. I think uh, the biggest one will be, I would need some investor to do the commercials and uh, yes. at that level and uh, small uh, contracts with the universities and stuff would definitely uh, help accelerate it because youth is the one who actually spread the word the fastest. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny? And I've, I'm sure you've heard this in business happen too, right? Where you just said the thing about pets, where you have this vision of helping save the world with Amber Alerts. And next thing you know, some pet owners come onto it. And then you have like 6 million dog owners who are looking out for our coyotes. And it becomes like the pet app. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> That's what, uh, so I just recently joined an accelerator. That's what the guy told me. He said like, what's your vision with the universities? I'm like, this is my vision. Uh, basically, children can report anything. There is a need for it because um, if somebody is in a need, they, they're alone, walking home alone. They need help right then, not when the incident has already happened, right? Right. So there's nothing like that for campus safety and stuff. And the best part about that is like if you're – a uh, child goes to Western University, you can monitor uh, Western University for incidents, right? <laughs> Even from right. here, if something yes. happens it's there, you will the also area. find out. Yeah, you yeah. will also know that. So there's nothing like that. Uh, so uh, that's what he was like. I wouldn't be surprised if your app started as a community safety app and it goes and starts uh, being the uh, university the parent, campus university safety app. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> A parent nanny app. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Uh, those who are watching, if you have any questions or any comments or any angles that we haven't hit, like please put it in the comment section. Like I like the anon anonymity question earlier. Um, yeah. So that's, that's exciting. Like I, I like hearing the origin of stuff and, and how it comes, right? So now you're at a point where the accelerator is giving you different angles on it. Um, yes. You've got some good partnerships with the police. Um, have, you're getting some good uptake. How do you get Actually, let me ask you like this. What is critical mass in terms of people using the app? Like how many people do you need for it actually to be effective, to be seeing enough events happening to people who I need to be on this six times a day, 10 times a day? You know what I mean? Sort of so thing. how I vision it is like when you monitor whatever areas, so there is a social feed, it gets populated based on what you have selected in those monitored areas, right? So it's your local news for those areas, right? Yes. Yeah. So I think the way I see is I'm trying to reach out to people police again, see if uh, they can start reporting their social media incidents, like for Twitter, whatever they report, like they're looking yes. for information on our app as well. Yes. Uh, what they'll do is they'll also create um, an inflow of incidents on the app and people might join. They might just be a spectator, which is perfect as well, because they can come right. in, look at like if there are any incidents in their area, if not, they can close the app. They can, in, in the morning, it's like I, I want it to be a, like a newspaper. You wake up, you yes. see your social feed, anything ha bad happened in your area. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have to add to it, you can go comment, like, dislike, or you can also s report that incident if it was a lie. Um, Ooh, and then yeah. go from there, right? right? And then you also look for verified incidents, which are reported by the police authorities. Yes. and see if there is something you could help with, right? Like if you got an incident, right. it means it happened in your area. If you have a surveillance camera, dash cam, right. you just quickly check it. And if you can help your authority, why not, right? Right. So, so in terms of the, uh, like, you know, on your phone, how you could like push or pull notifications? Yeah. Is, there, is there a way to pull notifications from Twitter that the police put out instead of waiting for the, the, the police to push it forward to you? Uh. It would be, I mean, like I can update the incidents if they send me something in an Excel sheet or something like that. Not from, it would be hard to do it from Twitter because the yeah. information in Twitter is not based on location, right? This, right. in Twitter, they say like in Brampton, wherever West Brampton or like an intersection, this happened yes. at this time and we are looking for information. In the meantime, like in mine, you have to select the, like you have to select the location where it happened. Yes. Right. And um, if you set the, you, because you get the notification only if it happened in your uh, area, right? Yes. Right, you won't right. get it on the west end of the city, east end of the city, like where you sure, don't sure, live. Sure. So you'd actually need someone physically monitoring Twitter and like, like someone like, I don't know, like basically just reading Twitter and then updating it according to areas. It wouldn't be. A, or, or I think, I think uh, the police departments, their social media department actually mm -hmm. updates mm -hmm. it in their, uh, in their Twitter and everything. They yes. can, they can just do it on our app as well. Right. right. Yeah. That, yeah. 
Because I think it does add value. In Twitter, you're just basically throwing it out to the whole city or multiple the cities. The whole world. Yeah. 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 And here, you're, you're just giving it to those, I don't know, like few users, those actually might have some information. Yeah, true. Nice. Right? Very cool. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. So that that's, it's very exciting to see where this is going to go. And uh, do you have an idea of how many users you have? From uh, like the day that you started till till now, uh, we have about uh, four hundred plus users now. Okay. Yeah, just within GTA, um, cool. and yeah, hopefully we keep growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's very cool. I think that that's uh, I, I see the opportunity that is here with this, and I hope that people jump on. And now, is there is there like a revenue? component to it like how do you is it just going to be like are there going to be like ads in there or is there something like you know i think yeah. like team you know team snap for example where it just kind of updates like sports and games and stuff like that for like kids sports is there like a, an app or a revenue component to it or advertising um right now i haven't hired anybody so if if like basically if we get a contract from universities or from the cities i might have to hire somebody and if cities want to use their own app then obviously they'll be like leasing the technology in that case yes. and we'll, we'll be supporting the technology. Then I'll have to hire people and that leasing model will be where the money will come from. Uh, yes. But if they just want to use it, I'll get the users. Then we uh, we're planning to just add uh, some uh, ads in the, within the app uh, mm -hmm. just like Facebook so that like we sure. get some revenue from keep the app free and then um, add some revenue from the ads. Yes. I just thought of, um, when talking about safety, I don't know if you heard this or read this somewhere, but Volvo, kind of unrelated, but in a sense connected, Volvo actually invented seatbelts, right? Yes. So for vehicles. So when they invented seatbelts, instead of making it proprietary, they made the copyright uh, public so that all automobile users can use it because safety was more important than revenue in that model i thought that was so inspiring and so powerful that they didn't kind of keep the technology to themselves but like safety was so important that exactly. they made a, a public thing instead of like keeping the copyright for themselves back in the day that's that's the that's the biggest reason i want to keep it up as like standalone because in that case i'm not asking our police authorities to pay me i'm not asking the universities to pay me all they yes. have to do is start using the app for the safety and just so that we can support the people who are working for the app, we, yes. can, uh, we can put the ads in the app just to make the revenue, right? So that's, yes. that's the goal. I want to keep it free so that like, everybody uses it instead mm -hmm. of, like, uh, like, let's say, Toronto Police or Peel Police lease it. Now, police can pay me and keep the, the ad free, but it is only limited to that region, right? Yes. I eventually want it to be like when you're traveling somewhere, for mm -hmm. example, I'm going to Texas and when I stay in an Airbnb, I can quickly put in the address and see like if, uh, if it's a lot yes. of crime in that area, right? Right. So then I can so, make my decision, yeah. do I book it or not? So do you connect with Airbnb then, right? Like do you or? Yeah, well, at that point, I think uh, there are a lot, like if we get to that point, I think, yeah, I think a lot of companies will be interested in us like Airbnb, Ring Doorbell, anything like, because Ring Door, yes. you can report stuff from Ring Doorbell and you can just report it on our app and everybody in the neighborhood could see it with the Ring the Water logo on that video. And yes. then people might think about like getting the Ring Doorbell, right? So yes, right. So it's just like, uh, it's a matter of time wow. when, uh, yeah, if, if, if it blows right. up, then I think a lot of companies uh, will benefit from it. Yes. That's huge. I'm going to read this comment here from Dr. Kator. Uh, there is a large number of cars being stolen in my area during the night. I think it would be beneficial if people shared their surveillance videos. This type of theft seems to be exploding. That, that's right. That's actually, uh, that's the thing, right? Like sometimes people record it. I've seen on uh, actually uh, Nextdoor app, like people say, oh, these people were trying to open the door for my car. Uh, that's it, right? Like that's it in the video. And then they're yes. like, people are chatting about it. You should keep your door, uh, do this, do that. But there's right. not no help in that, right? I, I yes. The way our app is different is like, 
if that person actually posted that incident on our app, it would be instantaneously telling other people in the area. And yes. like at best, they would make sure their car is locked. Yes, exactly. Right, right exactly. So yeah, because what happens with the Nextdoor app is then that, that posting comes up 24 hours, 36 hours later. And then based on the algorithm, I might not even see it and then realize that that was in my area so far after the fact. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Interesting. So you're going after next door, basically, in terms of that user, user pattern. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that it I think I'm going for like, it's a mix of social media. I, if you see like TikTok, yeah. Facebook, a lot of people post. If, uh, remember, uh, George Floyd case, right? Yes. So that happened. Imagine if like he he ended up dying. If he didn't die, we wouldn't have even never known. Like we don't, we wouldn't have known what happened to the guy. Right. True. Right. It only went viral because the guy ended up dying. So yeah. in our app, all the people have to do was like post that incident based on that location. George Floyd could have gone home and monitor that area, get the video, then taken it to the authorities. Like what did these guys do to me? Yeah. Right. Right. There are so many incidents where people actually, the video don't go viral because uh, people didn't die, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so in that, true. yeah, that, that's pretty sad uh, thing, right? Like I only found out just because it went viral. So I'm actually going for people like they're posting on Facebook, fine. Like you want to like and talk about it, fine. But like if you really want people to get justice, it should be here because if something happens to me and I know people would have recorded it, <laughs> right? And I know somebody right. has the proof. I just don't have it to go mm -hmm. to the court and get justice, right? So yes, right. as per this app, all I have That's, to do is yeah. where that happened to me. I just put that location and there you go. And somebody has anonymously posted yes. the video. I take down the video. I can reach out to the right authorities, whoever I need to report to. So I think um, I did try to reach out to yes. the people from um, Black Lives Matter, but like, obviously like I'm nobody, so nobody replied, but I think it's a big deal because if there are 85% of the people in Canada have smartphones and if anything like that is happening, people are recording. <laughs> yes. Right. And they're posting yeah. it on like different platforms where like well, here. They, they post it here, right? Like, but I can't get it because I don't know how to search for it. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so the right. victim in this case, the victim can get it. If all they have to know is where it happened, you put that location, you can tweak the monitor radius to a little bit higher so that you, that ended end up in your radius. And then you can yes. just go to the incident. If somebody has attached a video, you download mm -hmm. it you take it to the right authorities and hopefully right. you can get justice. Now, the other angle that I just thought of right now with this, like you've got my like entrepreneur mind thinking with this is instead of going to like, you know, the police or to like, um, what should we call it? Um, Airbnb or something like that is actually going to events. Right. And not, I mean, not going to events, but say, let's say for example, caravan is coming this weekend. Right. So as you register for the event, register for the app, use the app over the weekend, use this hashtag, whatever it is. So like you're connected to events, so you know that everyone at this event is on the app because it's part of the registration for the event. Okay. How do I do that? I have never done anything. Oh, like who that. knows? I, I just threw it up right now. I got <laughs> we can figure that out. Someone in the chat can figure it out. But I'm saying, but then you know that everyone at that event has the app so everyone knows that everyone's watching everybody else and sometimes when you have a, like a old school community watch initiative that enough is a deterrent for something bad to not happen because they know that there's eyes on the community or eyes on the car yeah, for, or eyes on whatever yeah so there's actually something better even uh, for the events that i thought like in us there's a problem of like mass shootings and stuff like that and they're using like semi-automatic, like massive weapons, right? It's in, and in like all the investigations, if you go through the details on, even online, like they have like, oh, this guy came with such a big gun. And then they interview people. They're like, yeah, I saw him. Like, 
So what happens is in that case, what people do is they actually see a weapon. They're like, okay, anything could happen. Like they get out of there, right? Yes. Meanwhile, if they inform, if they create an incident there, like, yes. I know it could create a panic, but like even even the guy who's who's going to do it, they, he might get worried. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, why are people running away or what's going on, right? Yes. So at least Absolutely. you are aware there is a chance for something happening, right? Like, even right. if you don't like, we don't like recommend people leaving the place or anything. But like, if you are aware that there is a potential danger, for sure, you, there is a chance you can save your life. Or like, if you are with kids, like you might as well just get out of there. Right. You said, and you said that there's an element of verifying an event or saying it's not true, right? So that that kind of takes away some of that scare. Uh, mentality with yeah but that could yeah yeah that that's the part like which will improve as people use it right sure, sure. there is a there is a, a technique like people can report it as fake incident like as soon as five people report it as fake incident we can just quickly remove it yep and then maybe an investigation of the person whoever uh created it or delete sure. their account and stuff like that uh, one of the things that I found just talking with people in my community is um, that snitch element where people <laughs> don't want to report something because they don't want to be, appear to be a snitch. Uh, but I've seen it all over social media, right? Like you open Facebook, you scroll through like a few videos, you'll see like people um, putting in videos for like shootings happening even even the there was the bank robbery in Vancouver when there was like people were shooting like po police uh, they were there was uh, basically uh, uh, I would say a shootout between the police and the thieves right yes there is there was people making videos and there were people around like I think there the app could be well used there as well because you're not really snitching you're posting a video to make the people aware so that they don't go close to the bank right. So yes. half of the police was actually stopping people from going to the bank. Yes. Right. And they're risking their lives, making sure people don't go close to the bank. Meanwhile, if they create an incident there, people have an app, they won't go close to the bank because they know like they could die. Right. Right. That's right. all they have to do. They can quickly post an incident and then they can go back to like being in the shootout, actually focus on what they should be doing. Resolving the situation. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Not, not like stopping people from going. And there, there's, there's been incidents where like there's oil spills, gas leaks. <clears throat> Police has been like stopping people from going towards because like there is a element like people are prone to like wherever there's a lot of police presence, they would just want to go see and like what's going on. For sure. <clears throat> Which sometimes could be like risky for their life and people oh, like, yeah. yeah, even for the cops who are trying to stop them. Meanwhile, they don't have proper gear to, excuse me. <clears throat> deal with the gas, right? Because by the time the department, actual department comes and neutralizes the situation, people have inhaled the gas or even mm -hmm. the cops have inhaled the gas and a lot of damage has been done, which could have been avoided by just telling people don't stay yeah. there. It's dangerous. Right, 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 right. Cool. Then, okay, so then the bullying component of it, can you talk a little bit more to that? Like we spend a lot of time on community safety in terms of like accidents and shootings and stuff like that. Can you talk a little bit more to the bullying piece and how that can tie in for parents and kids and schools? So what happened was like uh, my niece, uh, she witnessed a, a guy getting bullied. Um, when uh, she came and told my sister, my sister's like, okay, we, sh we should reach out and try to like, sh but my, my, uh, my niece didn't want like people to know like she was a snitch, right? The, yeah. like the snitch component right? right so she didn't want like anyone to know so really we like my sister tried to reach out to the authorities in the school to get the information of the uh, about the parents of the kid who was getting bullied so all they wanted to do was inform their parents that they're aware like what's going on in school yeah but it was such a hassle like eventually they're like okay we'll share this information then they shared that kid who was getting bullied, his parents' information with my sister, she called the parents, told them, like, your son has been getting bullied by, like, three other boys in the same class, right? And they, they had no idea. Like, the kid's mother started crying because, like, she had no idea. The kid wasn't talking to her. Like, yeah. he, he never told them, 
right? Right, right. So I I thought like in an app, what you could do is like as soon as my niece goes and tells my sister, all she had to do was like grade seven uh, A, the school and the event gets created at the school location because it's based right. on location. And um, it'll say like grade six A, uh, a boy has been bullied by three other boys, right? Yes. And as a parent, if you're monitoring their school, you'll get a notification. You open and you're like, okay, my kid is not in grade 6A, so yes. you're good. Right, but if right, your right. kid is in 6A grade and he's a boy, <laughs> he's mm-hmm. either getting bullied or it, he could be like the other three who are actually bullying the guy. Right, so right, right, this right, opens right. up uh, the conversation between the parents and the children uh, in a way that even if like my kid's not involved, I still want to talk to... Yes. My kid, because even if you're not um, getting bullied or bullying, you could still be impacted. Like my niece was like, uh, she was in a like a situation where she felt guilty that she's not doing anything. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like they're sensitive at like that age. Right. So mm. uh, so like she actually felt good because going forward, that kid was not getting bullied anymore. Yes. Because his, because really like uh, my sister reaching out to the authorities about the bullying wasn't the right approach because her kid wasn't involved, right? Yes. But the kid that was involved, their parents had no idea. Right. And, and actually, the interesting thing too with that, and I know this is frustrating for many parents, is the fact that the schools have to respect the confidentiality of the situation. Yes. So now if I go and report it, as another parent, and I think, I think my son might be involved or my son might have saw something or whatever, what's happening with that situation? Oh, I can't share that with you. Exactly. Right, so now you have this community reporting, this organic reporting network that's happening where now you can be updated on what's happening, you have a little bit more of a pulse on what's happening in that situation and don't feel like you're, you're being like left out in the dark by the school when something's happening because they're trying to protect some other student, but then that's also endangering some other student by not letting that information be out there. Yes. And the other thing is like, even if the information comes out, then in the school, you would know who reported it, <laughs> right? Yes. Exactly. So then, then my niece is in trouble. It could mm-hmm. be in trouble, right? Like, right. Yes. So I think that part of it was like, basically to start a conversation and at the university level, it could be like, somebody is selling the drugs in the university. And if somebody happens to report like an incident, yes. even if nothing happens, I think the person who is selling drugs will be scared. <laughs> right? right? Yes. Right? So they probably just won't do anything like in future. True. True. So, yeah, yeah. We, that's a conversation we're having here. Like with guys who are dealing drugs and stuff, they want to be as low key as possible. They're not exactly. Like, they're not necessarily the gangsters are going to shoot you for letting that know. They they actually want to continue to sell drugs, so they're trying to stay low key. And even the people who are buying, radar. right? If you're buying and, and buy. you end up on a video like anonymously reported, <laughs> like you're done. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. So there's that. So yeah. So that snitch element is legit. Like it's not just like if you saw a crime, it's like in these bullying situations amongst kids, like that can set up more bullying. And like, so this is protecting the reporter as much as protecting the people who could be the, the victims. Right. So, yes, exactly. Gotcha. Wow. That's good stuff. I can't believe that we just burned like 52 minutes talking. About this. <laughs> I, I know I can go forever. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's exciting. I mean, like, I, what do you think people in the, in the chat? Cause I mean, like this is something that, uh, you know, we're at the, you're, this is really still in a, such a, an, an infancy stage. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's so many other social media platforms that come and go and some make it big. Some become the next TikTok, and the next one kind of fizzles out. Uh, but there's some key elements in here in terms of the immediacy of this app uh, and just the community, you know, uh, connection. Like I use the word neighborhoodliness is, is, is a, a funny word that we've, I've heard somewhere and I don't know if it's a legit word or not, but that's the thing that's missing from our communities is people connecting and communicating and helping in a different way. And this is a very modernized way of, of, of nurturing and cultivating a neighborhood. Yep. Let's see what yeah. uh, people say. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and while we're doing that, can you write down in the, in the chat, the, the name of the app, 
if there's a website where people can follow up or even just the, the handle on IG or wherever else, like put some information down so people can check it out for themselves. <laughs> How do you really feel, Sonny? It's so true. People complain about everything. I put good stuff up sometimes and people still find a way to like, where you're wearing a bell when you were riding your bike kind of thing, right? Like you're like, yes, I was having a bell on my bike when I was there. like, so yeah, so it's funny how that happens. Okay. There's a TikTok. There's a XME underscore Goodwill handle. Yeah, so there's a handle. Thank you so much. This is uh this is the website as well. And yeah. uh you can sweet. Sammy for you. Uh Dr. Kator said, I think that this is a great idea. I agree that next door people seem to complain about all things all the time, and I don't want to hear it honestly. <laughs> all right. So before we turn this into a hate on next door thing, um there's one of the things I was talking about was uh, with reporting, like, you know, right now, one of the, one of the ways that we do things is you could, you can call like a non-emergency police line. Right. And then just to paint a picture for people like here in, in Peel, I can call the non-emergency line and then call it in. They say, thank you so much. We'll, we'll take a note of that. And they'll circle around and check it out. I can go on and go onto the police website and do an online reporting and then fill out the form. And then they document it. And then they can look into it. But then much like the schools, I can't call the police the next day and say, hey, what's going on with this? Did you find somebody? Like, they're not going to tell me. Exactly. Right? So it's good in one sense, because uh, for those of you who don't know, what happens is I've learned this from talking with a lot of police officers doing my, my campaigning. It becomes a complaint zone uh, metric sort of thing. What's the word they use? A uh, complaint flooding zone. So if I call and say, this is happening in this area, and then the next day someone calls and says, hey, this is happening in this area, and then two more people do it, when officers are doing their routine checks in the area, it, that complaint bumps up on the docket of things they need to do that day. So the more the complaints that come in that, that flood from that area, the higher it is on the priority of things that get done that day. Right. So that's how just uh, the non-emergency reporting works. So it's helpful because we become the eyes of the community, as I say, and the eyes of the community help the police. And that's all good. But that's not real time reporting with feedback and a continual flow of information. It's a one way dialogue, which is helpful, but doesn't really help us in terms of getting updates and that on, you know, look out from other community members. So there's a, a place for both, but I like, we keep talking about just the immediacy of this app, but just like the more people are on it, the more eyes are on everything that's happening from Ember Alerts to bullying to car incidences. So, and, and, the, and one of the main points I'd say is like, when you go report a non-emergency as a witness, something may or may not happen, but if you have that information as a victim because the witness actually posted here as a victim you downloaded it now you went there with the proof they'll instantly act on it because yes. you you because you have the proof right yes exactly good yeah so i think i i'm grateful for this conversation in terms of looking at partnerships instead of saying replacements yes exactly yeah yeah okay. good stuff Nice. All right. So the website is up there. You're on TikTok. You're here on IG. Uh, where else can we find you? Are, are there any other um, platforms, other places? Well, LinkedIn is where I found you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. LinkedIn. Uh, I do post a little bit on LinkedIn. I'm trying to make some connections where things could work out. Um, that's that's uh, for now. That's it. I think the website is the best way to go because it has a bunch of information how to download and set up the app. And uh, there is also the links for uh, app to be downloaded on Apple or Android phones. And okay. you can start using it, provide the feedback on the uh, website as well. 
cool. which which is pretty helpful when you provide feedback. A lot of uh, improvements have happened with the feedback. Amazing. Uh, last question, just before we go off now. So people here are watching. So let's say, for example, my friend in San Antonio, can she download the app and start building that network of people using it in San Antonio? Or is it really still like a central like GTA type app at this point? No, no, the app app is open to be used anywhere. Uh, but like you said, like if she can start building the or he or she can start building the network around there. I mean, that's great because all you need is a lot of people in your area using the app, right? Yes. I, yes. I'm thinking like even if 20% of the people start using the app in your area, you will have a lot. Like you are basically having 20% more. Even if you have like uh, a camera on your surveillance camera in your house versus 20% people have their camera. Basically, they can all report and that video can be used by you anytime. Yes. So that improves your security 20 times right there, right? That's a good point. Really yeah. good point. Yeah. Nice. So basically all you need is a lot of people using the app in your area. If they're using it, you can use it anywhere. That's great. Good to know. All right, everyone. So download the app. Gurpreet, thanks for your time, man. I really appreciate this chat and I'm excited for you and your vision for, for what this can do. Oh, no. Thank you, Martin, for inviting me here. I'm really honored. Mm, that's my pleasure. Um, use this. Like, and like I, I always say this to people too, like, please feel free to like, I'll, I'll link you in this so you can put this on your page. Um, and uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Kator. I appreciate that. Um, use this, like recycle it, grab sound bites from it. Like you, you spoke really brilliantly to this. So like, I like when people can share the vision in this context. It's different than doing like an infomercial. Like recycle this as much as you want. Like this is like public domain, use it. And uh, I hope that I hope that this really grows for you. All right, man. Thank you so much. All right. Yes, thank you. And thank you to everyone who joined. Uh, appreciate Dr. K. Tor for all your comments and interaction. Thank you, Sunny. And for everyone who came through, appreciate you. And we're back at it tomorrow. So thank you very much. Thanks for your time, man. Thanks. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye.